right. Welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for joining me this evening for this month's free virtual nutrition talk. My name is Karen Caldwell, and I'm the owner and nutrition coach here at B3 Gym. Our nutrition talk this evening is all about food, mood, and stress management. And you might be wondering, does food really affect your mood? And the answer is 100% yes. But don't worry, because I'm going to give you three tips to help you find the healthiest and happiest version of yourself. You should have received a um, email with a workbook that you can use to follow along. If you do have any questions as we go, you can type them in the chat or just write them down and I will open it up for questions at the end. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and we will get started. All right. So at B3 Gym, we believe something as fundamental as nutrition shouldn't be complicated. We want you to feel confident with a realistic and sustainable plan, which is why we focus on a habit-based approach to help you reach your goals one step at a time. Our nutrition program is backed by Healthy Steps Nutrition, who has helped over 30,000 people all around the world take control of their health. And here are just a few of our very own incredible success stories from our members here at B3 Gym. We know that taking steps towards improving your health is simple, but it's far from easy. Just like these successful people, you can find your success one step at a time. So today is all about food, mood, and stress, and really all about how these things work together to affect your health. So you might be wondering outside of those hangry feelings, how does the food we eat affect our mood? Many studies have shown that diets high in fruits and vegetables, modest in lean protein, and void of many processed sugars and foods are associated with 25 to 35% lower risk of depression when compared to a typical westernized diet. And we say westernized diet, also known as the standard American diet, is typically high in processed foods, red meats, sugar, fat, and often highlights prepackaged foods. So after the holidays, I often find myself feeling those post-holiday blues. And after some research, I found that I was not alone in that. While part of that low mood and energy might be from the hustle and bustle of, of the season, we also need to consider how the foods associated with the holidays might play a role in that as well. In a study published in a psychology and cognitive neuroscience journal, researchers found that in as little as one week, eating a westernized diet can significantly alter brain function, with the participants of the study doing worse on learning and memory tests. Further, the western diet was tied to overeating and increased cravings of sugary treats after consuming a regular meal. How many of us can relate to thinking about reaching for something sweet right after finishing a meal? Additionally, this study found that these participants had experienced an impact in the hippocampus due to their diet. And the hippocampus is responsible for things like emotions, learning, and motivation. So it's no wonder that when we start to get in the habit of not making the best food choices, it's hard to start making the right choices again on our own. So why and how is this happening? Serotonin might be a familiar term when you think of mood. Serotonin is often known as the happiness hormone, but did you know that this hormone impacts our entire body, affecting things like sleep, eating, our feelings, and digestion? Even more, did you know that a vast majority of our serotonin receptors are located in our gut? Newer research is finding that the balance of good and bad bacteria in our gut is directly related to our diet and has a connection with diseases, including depression and anxiety. So what these findings are telling us is that when we aren't making the choice to eat a balanced diet, the balance of our gut, which is directly related to our mood, gets compromised, leading us to feel more sad and unmotivated. So now that we know that our food is truly playing a role in our mood, here's what we can start doing to find not only our healthiest version of ourselves, but also the happiest version. Tip number one is going to be to focus on food quality. Here you see the plate method. The plate method is one of the easiest and most effective ways to improve your diet by eating a balanced meal of high quality foods. 
You wanna start reshaping your plate to have half of your plate filled with non-starchy vegetables, such as broccoli, green beans, asparagus, zucchini, just to name a few. Next, you wanna have about a palm or quarter of your plate filled with lean protein, such as seafood, chicken, or turkey, leaving the last quarter of your plate for those starchy carbohydrates like potatoes, quinoa, fruits, rice, and maybe some breads. We also wanna add in a small amount of healthy fats like avocado or olive oil. Try to avoid processed foods and stick to foods you can primarily find in the perimeter of the grocery store. Tip number two, stay aware and mindful of added sugars. Along with highly processed foods affecting our serotonin response, let's take a moment to specifically talk about sugar in the body. Our brains require glucose or sugar for energy. In fact, the brain is the most energy demanding organ and uses nearly half of all the sugar we consume. But just like anything else, too much of something can become a problem. Have you ever had a sweet treat and then within the next hour or so you felt a mental fog and even decreased happiness leading to even more cravings? You aren't going crazy. This is the actual effect excess sugar has on our bodies. When we consume high amounts of sugar, our blood sugar surges and then is followed by a crash. And research has found a relationship between this high and crash of our blood sugar and mood disorders, such as depression, anxiety, as well as learning and memory functions. So how is sugar causing this? Sugar suppresses an important hormone called BDNF. This particular hormone has been found in lower levels in individuals with depression and other mental disorders. We also know that sugar promotes the inflammatory response in our body, and when consumed in high amounts consistently, it can become chronic inflammation, which impacts our immune system and brain. This may also lead to the connection between sugar consumption and depression. Further, we know that the inflammation response after consuming a diet high in sugar may also worsen anxiety symptoms by impairing the body's natural ability to cope with stress. Sugar has been known to cause blurred vision, difficulty thinking, and fatigue due to that crash, which is similar to what a panic attack might feel like for some people. While sugar itself does not cause anxiety, research has established a correlation between sugar consumption and anxiety. Or in other words, diets high in sugar may exacerbate actual stress as well as, as, well as feelings of increased stress. Lastly, studies have shown the effects of sugar on memory high amounts of sugar in the body can cause insulin resistance, which damages the communication between brain cells that are fueled by sugar needed for learning and memory in our day. If you wanna hear more about sugar, be sure to listen to episode 50 of the Grow Your Nutrition Business podcast. So while sugar hides almost everywhere, there are two easy ways that you can start to identify and swap out excess sugar in your day. Balanced snacks should be treated like meals. Think back to the plate method. Do they have a good source of protein, carbohydrate, and fat? Take a look at these few options and commit to trying one this week. I'm a huge fan of the triple zero Greek yogurt with some blueberries and walnuts. If you're eating packaged foods, make sure you're checking the nutrition labels for added sugars. When foods are marked as low fat, they typically contain tons of added sugar. Sugar can have many names, so if there are a lot of ingredients on the label that you can't pronounce, try to choose another option or stick with whole foods. Another way that sugar sneaks its way into our day is through sugar-sweetened beverages. Rather than reaching for soda, lattes, or juices, aim to drink more water. If you struggle to drink plain water, try adding some of these different water combinations for a refreshed experience. Fruit, mint, herbs are all great options to add into your water. So far we've talked about how your food is affecting your mood, but let's shift gears to talk about something that too often goes unnoticed during our health and wellness journey. And that's gonna be stress management. We live in a world that constantly throws stress at us, but you have you taken the time to think about how does that affect your health? We know that increased stress leads to increased cortisol in the body, 
And these higher levels of cortisol lead to increased blood sugar and inflammation, suppressed immune system, and decreased nutrient metabolism. Studies also show that increased levels of stress might cause weight gain and water retention, high blood pressure, fatigue, changes in mood causing irritability, and insulin resistance, which we br briefly talked about earlier. It's clear that while stress often flies under the radar in our journey, we need to take control of this if we want to increase our overall health and mood. While stress isn't as simple to navigate around like sugary beverages, we can work on proper stress management techniques. Practicing mindfulness when presented with stressors gives us alternative ways to process and handle what's happening. Whenever you're feeling stressed, practice STOP to become a little bit more mindful. STOP stands for slow down, take a breath, Observe what you're feeling in your body, such as what you're thinking and what other possibilities might exist. And lastly, proceed considering multiple possibilities. So when you're triggered by a stressor, stop and take a moment before you react. Taking the time during stressful moments to stop and become more mindful will help you shift your mindset. When I ask people how they manage stress, I'll often hear food or alcohol. At the end of a tough day, a few drinks become a form of stress relief for some. When we're in a moment of high stress, we turn to food for that temporary comfort. Instead of using food or alcohol, here are five other ways to manage your stress that might work for you. Exercise is a big one for most of our members at my gym. Daily journaling is also a great way to get out some of those thoughts and feelings. Meditation or yoga is a great way to connect back with your body. Breathing exercises is another one as well. Talking with your support system is really important. And then practicing gratitude as well. To learn more about how the food we eat is connected to our mood, be sure to check out episode 34 on the Nutrition Made Simple podcast with Nicola Coyne. This podcast is a great resource to help you learn more, not only about nutrition, but also about different aspects of lifestyle that affect your health. Be sure to check it out. So at this point, your workbook should be filled with notes and you should be realizing just how important the foods we eat are in regards to not only our physical health, but also our mental health. With all of the misinformation out there, we know that this can feel really overwhelming. To start building your foundation, here are some principles that have helped so many people take control of their health, one habit at a time. Number one is gonna to be to add more whole foods into your diet. We already touched on the plate method, but I can't emphasize how effective this method is. Start choosing more whole food options and less processed foods that are packed with sodium, fat, and sugar. A simple way to start this is just by reshaping your plate. Half of your plate, non-starchy veggies, quarter lean protein, quarter starchy carbs, and a mindful amount of healthy fats. Principle number two is gonna to be to focus on balance. And when we say balance, we mean, does every meal and snack you consume throughout the day contain carbohydrate, a protein, and a fat? Pairing each meal and snack with all three of these macronutrients will keep you feeling fuller for longer. Principle number three, limit the added sugar. The American Heart Association recommends no more than six teaspoons for women and nine for men per day. The average person consumes over 150 pounds of sugar per year, which is 46 teaspoons per day. And that's not surprising. Sugar is super addicting and is hidden almost everywhere in food products that you find in the packages. Now I'd like to take some time to answer some of our frequently asked questions. What do you eat around your workout? Fueling around your workouts to gain muscle, lose fat, increase energy, or really any health and fitness goal is really important. Aim to have healthy carbohydrates and proteins before and after your workout. If you don't put gas in your car, you wouldn't expect it to get you anywhere. So don't run your body on empty. My favorite pre-workout fuel is an applesauce packet and an HSN egg muffin. My favorite post-workout is a non-fat Greek yogurt with a handful of blueberries. What if you don't like vegetables? 
I've heard this one many, many times, and maybe you feel this way, but I want to challenge you and ask, what if you just haven't found the right way that you like your vegetables? Roasting your vegetables will give you a nice crunch rather than mushy vegetables. Adding different seasonings can change up the flavors you can be excited about. And even finding ways to sneak them into recipes or smoothies are easy ways to get more vegetables in your day. Where to start? This is a great question. Start with one thing at a time. Maybe it's something you've already thought about, or maybe it's one of the things that we talked about today. The best and fastest way to reach your goals is to work one-on-one -on -one with a nutrition coach to build an individualized plan just for you. So here's the deal. There's never going to be a perfect time to get started. There's always something that's going to stand in the way. You have to make the commitment to yourself. It's simple, not easy, but we're here to help. If you're thinking about that all this sounds really great, but you don't know where to start, or you really just need someone to help you create a plan that's realistic for you and someone to keep you accountable, we would love to help. So here at B3 Gym, we focus on a habit-based approach to create an individualized plan just for you. We work together, utilizing many tools and resources to build your nutrition foundation and create a sustainable plan that you can build into your current lifestyle. Along with our tools and resources, we know how important support and accountability is when it comes to your long-term goals, which is why we're there to help you every step of the way. Visit our website or email me directly to schedule a free intro session so we can learn more about your goals and talk about how we can help you achieve them. If you're looking to hear more about how this program can change your life, tune into Nutrition Made Simple podcast. I'm going to plug that podcast one more time. I'm also very, very excited to announce our Nutrition and Accountability Challenge coming up. 28-day challenge. This is going to start January 24th. We're opening up 20 spots um, during this challenge. You'll work with a coach individually to discuss your goals at the beginning and end, and you'll have tons of group support throughout the challenge to keep you accountable. I'm going to send out the sign-up link in a follow-up email. Don't wait to get started. So today we talked about three tips to help you find the healthiest and happiest version of yourself. Focus on high-quality foods. Stay mindful of added sugars and manage your stress. If you do have any questions or comments, you can send me a quick follow-up email, reach out to us um, on Facebook, anything like that. If you are, or if you've ever felt like you were in a slump or navigating excess amounts of stress, now is the time to take control of your health and work with a professional to help you find the best balanced foods and mindfulness techniques to help you reach your short and long-term goals. Thank you so much for joining me. And if you're looking for additional help to dive into your nutrition, be sure to schedule a free intro session with me. Um, happy holidays, and I will see you next month. Our next free virtual nutrition talk will be coming up early January, and we'll be talking about how to find success in the new year. I will see you all then. Thank you again for joining us, and I'll see you next time. Happy holidays.